What has been a source of strength or inspiration for you during this tricky time? I think what's really inspiring is that people are still trying to have challenging conversations. That there's still the struggle that of how how do I do this? How do I do this? Um, instead of just like bouncing, I'm out, I'm not doing it anymore, right? Like we really have a tolerance level for the unknown and that's really inspiring to me. I'd say it's, it's very clearly been um when I've met people who are also into idea exploration. Like whenever I've had like a call with somebody or sometimes a, you know, a careful face-to-face -face meeting uh, and just sitting and like uh, playing together around a new idea or a question, I find that wildly invigorating. And I, I just started to notice that whenever I did that, I got a little bit of a lift for, for the rest of the week. Um, I remember when the pandemic first hit, I became, well, we were aware of it in January of 2020, but when it started to become real here in the United States, I remember having this moment of, oh no, you know, am I going to die? Are we going to lose our house? Are we going to lose all, you know, all those, those feelings yeah. of fear. And the initial point of inspiration for me was my faith tradition of making that decision. Okay, so I have grown up in this faith. I believe that there is a higher power. Am I going to now choose to really believe that or am I going to succumb to fear? And so even if you don't have a faith tradition, I would say it was that decision to make a choice of am I going to proceed with hope and a belief that the future will be brighter, that we will get through this, or will I crumple up and, and give up? My father passed away last year, but that was a source of real strength for me because he had Alzheimer's. But I also realized I didn't really know him uh, as well as I could have. And I had to write his eulogy and I found out stuff that I never knew about my dad in terms of his work as a pediatric cardiologist. So that has been a huge strength to me. It's a loss for the family, but it's been a strength for all of us in terms of celebrating his life. I want to say family and friends, of course, frontline workers that who have so bravely put themselves out there to take care of the rest of us. But maybe the the theme that runs through all of that is the grace that I've seen extended among human beings. You know, we in the news, we see so many of the, the stories of people behaving ungracefully, and yet there are so many examples of um, kindness and gentleness and uh, love and care that have, I know, lifted me up, and I've seen lift those in my circle up as well. You know, uh, for, for me, it's been going back to some very simple, um, um, I don't know, philosophy or, or lessons about life. Uh, you know, people always say, stop and smell the flowers. Well, I've been doing that for the last two years, um, maybe not in winter in New England, but the rest of the time. And just going slower and, and breathing and, and taking time to talk to people and really talk to people. Obviously, family and faith will, will come first, but but... I would say in addition to that, um, books have been a great source of inspiration for me. Um, reading for pleasure as well as reading leadership books, um, reading biographies of great leaders. I, I found that I've always valued books, but especially in the last two years as you know, we all went through this global pandemic and hopefully we we're at the end of it, just books have been a great source of, of support and inspiration knowing that i'm not alone it's like when you realize everyone else is in the same situation dealing with similar things in a very different way um that we're all connected in the end and um that's been one source of inspiration especially when days get tough and and you just feel like you're starting to burn out and you realize oh everyone else feels that way too yes <laughs> so, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So that's and my my biggest source there has been a lot of distraction and stress about working from home in the middle of the pandemic and having all the kids around and trying to do you know everything that you have to do to, to juggle that especially as a mom and as a woman but having 
That said, I have really found this strength in turning back the dial. We were just all over the place. Every kid was in every, you know, single sport and activity and we were always on the go and we were dividing and conquering and the slowing down piece has been very healthy for me. Oh, how people have really rallied around each other and supported each other and come together. I think that has been wonderful. Um, in my world, seeing how much people are really willing to invest in their own development, even amidst all the chaos, you know, people are still um, you know, investing in courses, investing in books, investing in reading. And I also belong to a number of communities that I think are very supportive. So an example would be the Silicon Guild, which is a group of authors who write nonfiction work uh, that, um, you know, that, that we, we really support each other. So if somebody's launching a book, everybody kind of comes together. And I think those sources of communities and strength are really important. My friend Mark Thompson and I, every weekend, spend six hours during the entire COVID period with about 50 or 60 amazing people, and they talked about their lives. You know, this is the, from the person that wrote Ask Powerful Questions with me. It's three favorite questions. What brings you joy? What is this moment teaching you right now? And what is a crossroads you are at? And he would add to that. It was a crossroads you're at and what about that is important, but they couldn't engrave it on a little piece of wood. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, those, those three questions have been rolling around in my brain and have really uh, centered and drawn me back to uh, the heart of what matters.